Hi, welcome to the new video series on the workbook exercises to go along with Syntax of Generative Introduction. My name is Andrew Carney and I'm the author of the textbook. This video goes along with Chapter 3, Exercise 3.2, Trees for Prepositional Phrases. Today we're going to be drawing some trees for prepositional phrases. Let's start off by reviewing the four rules that are involved in making noun phrases and prepositional phrases. First of all, we have the noun phrase rule. The noun phrase rule says that every noun phrase consists of an optional determiner followed by any number of optional adjective phrases, followed by the head noun, followed by any number of prepositional phrases. The prepositional phrase rule says you have a preposition followed by an optional noun phrase. The adjective phrase rule, you'll remember, says you have an optional adverb phrase followed by an adjective. And the adjective phrase rule says you have an optional adverb rule followed by an adverb. We're going to start with a relatively simple example under his desk. And we're going to draw the tree two different ways. We're going to draw it from the bottom to the top and from the top to the bottom. The bottom to the top method is the one that's most useful for people who are just beginning. Remember, our first step with this method is to identify the parts of speech of each of the words. So we have under his desk, under here is a prepositional phrase, his is a determiner, and desk is a noun. Now remember, you start on the right and move to the left. You're also going to start with adjective and adverb phrase rules, then the noun phrase rule, then the prepositional phrase rule. There's no adverbs here, so we're going to start with the noun phrase. Notice that in the noun phrase rule, you're allowed to have an optional determiner followed by a noun. And that's what we have right here. We have a determiner followed by a noun. And that gives us our noun phrase. Now let's look at the prepositional phrase rule. We have a preposition followed by a noun phrase. And that's exactly what we have here. So we're going to connect those together with a prepositional phrase. That draws the tree from the bottom to the top. We can draw the same tree, just reversing the process, going from the top to the bottom. So we can start with a prepositional phrase. And a prepositional phrase, according to our prepositional phrase rule, consists of a preposition followed by a noun phrase. Our preposition here is under. Our noun phrase can consist of a determiner, any number of adjective phrases, a noun, any number of prepositional phrases. But here we just have a determiner and a noun. The determiner is his, and the noun is desk. And we get essentially the same tree. Okay, now we're going to move on to a more complicated example. One thing that's important to think about as you're drawing these trees is the principle of modification. The principle of modification says if you have a phrase that's modifying some head, they have to be sisters in the tree. So let's draw this um, particular large prepositional phrase from the bottom to the top, keeping in mind that basic principle. Again, the first step is to identify all the parts of speech. The is a determiner. Flag is a noun. On is a preposition. The is another determiner. Pole is a noun. In is a preposition. The is yet another determiner. Square is a noun. Near is a preposition. The is yet another determiner, and legislature is a noun. Now, there's two things you have to do here. One is start on the right, start with adjective phrases and adverb phrases, then noun phrases and prepositional phrases, and you have to keep in mind what modifies what. The noun phrase rules include prepositional phrases, and the prepositional phrase rule allows noun phrases inside of it. So you find those two rules cycling together. So let's start off with the noun legislature. You can ask the question, is there anything that modifies legislature? The determiner modifies the noun legislature, 
and that is a perfect noun phrase. So we're going to join those two together, and we form a noun phrase. Whenever you have a preposition followed by a noun phrase, you have a prepositional phrase automatically. So near the legislature is going to be a prepositional phrase. Okay, next let's look at um, the other nouns here. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to assume that near the legislature modifies square. So the square is near the legislature. Our noun phrase rule allows you to include prepositional phrases. So here we have a determiner, a noun, and a prepositional phrase. And those three things together are going to give you a noun phrase. In this case, that prepositional phrase modifies the head noun, so they're sisters. Remember what I said just a minute ago about any time you have a preposition followed by a noun phrase? Here we have in the square near the legislature. That in is followed by that noun phrase. We get a prepositional phrase. Okay, so we have quite a complicated structure here so far. Next, let's think about poll. In the square near the legislature is where the poll is located. So that prepositional phrase here modifies poll. And again, our noun phrase rule allows a determiner, a noun, and a prepositional phrase. So we're going to connect those three things together into a noun phrase. Now this is a point that I want you to pay careful attention to. You might have been attempted to include near the legislature in the same noun phrase as poll, dominated by the same noun phrase up there. But that would have meant that near the legislature was describing the poll rather than the square. So be careful to make sure that prepositional phrases attach in so that they are sisters of the head they um, modify. Here we have a preposition followed by a noun phrase. That gives us a PP. And once again, we have a determiner, a noun, and a prepositional phrase. And that gives us a noun phrase. We're going to draw this next tree from the top to the bottom. But I want to point something out about this noun phrase um, that is different from the previous example. In the previous example we looked at, each of the prepositional phrases modified the noun that was immediately to its left. So for example, in the previous example, near the legislature modified square. And in the square, modified pole, and on the pole, modified flag. But in this next example, that isn't always true. So let's take um, the, the prepositional phrase, with the pink lid. With the pink lid modifies container. It does not modify diet sodas per the directions in the question. Assume that the container has the pink lid, not the sodas. So we're going to want to be careful that this prepositional phrase, with the pink lid, is connected to container and not to sodas. Okay, with that in mind, let's start up here. When you draw from the top to the bottom, you actually start on the other side. We have a prepositional phrase that's headed by the preposition in. Prepositional phrases are prepositions followed by noun phrases. So we have a noun phrase. Now this particular noun phrase is the rest of the string, the intensely blue ceramic container of the sodas with the pink lid. So all of that stuff is going to be underneath this noun phrase, but connected hierarchically. So let's start off with the, which is our determiner. And now what we have to deal with is um, the noun head and its modifiers. So Let's uh, start off with um, intensely blue, which is an adjective phrase. And that adjective phrase consists of two parts. It consists of an adverb phrase, which is intensely, and an adjective, blue. There's another adjective phrase in this, within this noun phrase. It's ceramic. Ceramic is its own adjective. 
It is not modified by blue, and it doesn't modify blue. So we have a separate adjective phrase just for the word ceramic. Notice that this is allowed by our noun phrase rule, which allows you to have multiple adjective phrases. Next, we have the head noun container. This head noun is modified by two prepositional phrases, of diet sodas and with the pink lid. Notice that with the pink lid does not modify sodas, it modifies container. Similarly, of diet sodas modifies container. So this means that container is going to have two prepositional phrase sisters. The first one is of diet sodas. Of is the preposition. And then the noun phrase consists of two bits. There's an adjective phrase, diet, and a noun, sodas. And we have a second prepositional phrase with the pink lid. This consists of a preposition and a noun phrase that has a determiner, the, an adjective phrase, pink, and a noun, lid. Remember, when you're drawing trees from the top to the bottom, it's important to check that all of the words you have in the um, phrase are in fact in your tree, and it's important to check that each item in your tree is licensed by a rule. Okay, let's try this more complicated example that has prepositional phrases embedded inside of noun phrases. This particular prepositional phrase is actually ambiguous. Um, the various prepositions can modify various things. So, for example, near Bisbee could refer to the farm, it could refer to the tea, or it could refer to a pot. In this case, we're actually told in the instructions to assume that farm is near Bisbee. So, Bisbee, um, near Bisbee is going to be a modifier of farm. That means when we draw our tree, we're going to want to make sure that this prepositional phrase is on the same level as this head noun farm from the new farm near Brisby. And uh, in principle, this could modify either tea or pot. So the pot could be made in Bisby, or the tea could be made in Bisby. The pot could be, come from the farm, or the tea could come from the farm. And we're told here in the instructions again to assume that the tea is from the farm. So this whole prepositional phrase from the new farm near Bisbee modifies um, tea, not pot. So we have to keep that in mind when, our draw when we're drawing our prepositional phrase. So let's start off um, at the top with the prepositional phrase that's headed by with. So we have a preposition here, which is with. And we have a noun phrase, a pot of tea from the new farm near Bisbee. So this um, noun phrase um, has a determiner a, uh, a head noun pot, and another prepositional phrase of t. Now, again, if the if the pot came from the farm, we'd have yet another prepositional phrase over here, which would be from the from the new farm near Bisbee but we're explicitly told not to do that. So we're just going to erase that, that prepositional phrase for now. It's gonna attach lower to account for the, prep, the uh, principle of modification. Okay, so next up, we have um, of T from the new farm near Bisbee. Uh, so we have the of, and this uh, noun phrase is headed by the noun T. And T is modified by that prepositional phrase from the new farm near Bisbee. Um, we have from, and we have this noun phrase. From uh, the new farm, we have a determiner, the, and we have an adjective phrase, which is headed by new. And then we have a noun, which is, um, farm. And here we have a prepositional phrase hanging off the end here, which is for front near Bisbee. So we'll just attach that in, preposition, noun phrase, near Bisbee. 
If, um, if the T was from Bisbee, we attach it in um, at this level. If the pot was from Bisbee, we'd attach it in at this level. That's how ambiguity works. Let's now move on to one more example. We have the bowl under the table with the rickety legs with the blue stripes. Now here we want to um, keep in mind what we're told about the principle of modification. With blue stripes could modify legs, it could modify table, and it could modify bowl. In this case, we're told to assume that the, that the, um, the bowl is the element with the blue stripes. So with the blue stripes is going to attach in the same noun phrase as bowl. Um, and we're also told to assume that with the rickety legs modifies table. In principle, if you had a bowl that had legs, it could modify bowl. But I think the easiest, exam uh, the easiest interpretation is one where with the rickety legs modifies table. And that's how we're going to draw this tree. Here, unlike the previous example, where uh, in the previous example we saw um, the, the prepositional phrases each attaching low, here we have a prepositional phrase that's going to attach quite high, even though it's at the end of the sentence, of the prepositional phrase. So let's draw this noun phrase. We have a noun phrase has the determiner the, has the head name bowl, and then we have the prepositional phrase under the table with the rickety legs. This modifies bowl. So this is a prepositional phrase headed by under. And we also have the prepositional phrase with the blue stripes. As we're told that in this circumstance we are to interpret that prepositional phrase with bowl. And by the principle of modification, this PP has to be a sister to this head noun if it modifies it. So this is the with prepositional phrase. Okay, so now let's um, draw the rest of this. We have under the table with the rickety legs. So this is our noun phrase, the table with the rickety legs. We have um, a determiner. We have the head noun. And then we have the prepositional phrase with the rickety legs, which is um, headed by the preposition with. Then we have the noun phrase, the rickety legs. And um, now we have to complete this prepositional phrase with the blue stripes. We have a determiner, we have an adjective phrase, and we have the head noun stripes. And that's it for exercise 3.2.